Hello. Today we're doing the engine overview of our new library, the Watchkeeper. The main page contains all controls for the basic sample playback, such as sample window, separate amplitude envelopes for each sample in the patch, playback style menu, and while almost every loop inside the Watchkeeper is essentially a collection of the round-robin samples organized in an A-B manner, we've created seven playback algorithms to open the full potential of this approach. Default mode will play samples as they are represented in the sample window, one after another. Random will play any next sample in the loop. TikTok will preserve A-B relations between samples, but will choose every next sample randomly. Odd, as the name implies, will play only odd samples. Even will play only even ones. Reversed is the opposite of the default mode and plays samples from the end to the start of the loop. Free mode is a great way to imitate round robins with one sample by defining the playback range with the start and end markers and random sample start position, which will shift the start of the sample playback each time it's triggered. The dope thing about this mode is that you can use one sample to create different results. This time, by adjusting the envelope, we'll create a pad from the same sample. And here are our samples in the context. Let me show you a quick tip. You can take any groove that you've created and by changing the playback style create a new version of the groove. This is the same patch but with all instruments set to only odd slices. If you want to create a patch that will never repeat itself, choose the random playback style. And every time it plays, you will get a different result. Layering menu allows stacking two or three samples on top of each other. Since every sample is a round robin, this technique will create a true stereo image without any phase issues. Let's look at the tripling option controls. Delay determines the static offset between each layer. Drift introduces a dynamic offset, which is essential for adding liveness to performance. Width defines how wide layers are spread in the stereo field. The levels knob controls the volume balance of the mid and side layers. The filter is capable of operating in two modes. Velocity mode will dynamically react to the incoming notes, closing the filter on the low velocity values. Constant mode is a classic set and forget mode. Offset allows you to add instability, shuffle, or even pure rhythmic madness by shifting the loop forward or backward in time.
You can play any loop chromatically with the key stretch function. Simply choose the desired loop, engage the key stretch, define the lower and higher note range, and you're good to go. This is a great way of finding the perfect pitch for percussive samples that complements your track. Turning the step mode off still allows you to play loops in sync with your project, but now you can fully utilize the start and end markers for each loop as well as the sample playback speed. This way you can create intricate clock patterns of any complexity inside a single instance of the watchkeeper. The sequencer is the beating heart of the watchkeeper's engine. By using the hotkeys, you can divide steps with the plus and minus buttons up to eight subdivisions and dial in patterns in almost no time. Copy the pattern by pressing global copy, increase the number of steps, paste by pressing global paste, and you have your basic rhythm. The fastest way to transfer this rhythm to the filter tab is to press the copy table button, open the filter, and press the paste table button. Now you can choose one of the seven filter types. Now it's time to go to the layers tab and adjust the threshold slider. This way we are setting the lowest velocity value from which the doubling will occur. Press the arrange button to apply and drag a few steps up to add the tripling. Layering options can be controlled straight from this tab. Simply press the gear icon and you'll see all parameters we've discussed on the main page. The pan tab will help you to place the instrument in the stereo field or to add some movement to the sequence. And while you can still draw it by hand, my favorite way is to use the random button, which is independent for each sequencing lane. To tame the result or to go to the extremes, you can use the pan dynamic slider. Now let's switch to another patch and take a look at the pitch. It can go up or down 24 semitones and can be used to really spice things up. Here's how it sounds without a pitch. Again, we will use the random button and pitch dynamics slider to control the amount of pitch modulation. When you work with long samples, their tails can layer on top of each other, creating a sonic mess. Retrigger will cut the tail of the previous sample at the start of a new sample or step, preventing them from layering on top of each other and allowing each next sample to sound without any interference. Shifting sequences is an awesome way to create something fresh in a few clicks. Here's the artist multi-patch in its initial state. You can shift the sequence by the whole step using the arrow keys on the left and right sides of the sequencer. Or by using the Control or Command on Mac, we can move it by step subdivisions. Also, we can flip the sequence on a horizontal or a vertical axis. I especially love uneven sequences, so I can just move the sequence locators. Or if I'm interested in a specific area, I can define it by the locators, crop, copy it, and spread it on the desired amount of steps. 15, for example. Let's switch to the stretch mode and talk about the arpeggiator menu. 
Play All is the default mode, which can play monophonic as well as polyphonic sequences depending on the keys pressed. Ascending will play notes from the lowest to the highest pressed. Descending plays notes from the highest to the lowest pressed. Order plays notes in the order they were pressed on the keyboard. For the next mode to shine, we need up to eight MIDI notes. In advanced mode, you can define which of the eight notes will sound during every step by checking the boxes for each of them. The next trick works best with percussive material. Simply press the random button for cool and unexpected results. To clear the step, press C in the note selector. To hide the note selector, press the chords button. And to initialize the pattern, you can use the reset button. The key sequence works in monophonic mode and allows you to lock any step to the particular key. Simply click on the key selector area under the step and press the desired key. To lock the whole sequence to a specific key hold shift, click on the box under the step and press the desired key. To change one step, simply use the arrows in the key selector area. Also, you can fully randomize the outcome by pressing the randomize key and sequence, keys only, or sequence only buttons. It's time to talk about dynamics. Essentially, it's an additional sequencer, which offsets the main one in a positive or negative direction. It has independent lanes for velocity, pan, filter, and pitch, as well as all the standard individual controls, randomize, copy, paste, and reset, as well as separate sensitivity sliders to control the impact of each dynamic lane. But what sets it apart is the ability to switch between passive and active modes. Passive will simply offset the main sequence. while active will add or subtract steps of the main sequence, literally reshaping its pattern. And all the awesome controls like flips, sequence shifts, and smoothing are available here too, absolutely independent from the main sequencing lanes. Now let's open advanced settings. Here we'll find two awesome probability features. Skip steps allows you to specify the velocity range and the chance of silencing steps of the sequence. Here's the sequence without skipping. And that's how it sounds with skip steps on. The ghost steps will convert steps within the specified range into ghost notes with low velocity values. Again, without ghost steps. And with ghost notes. Using skip and ghost step functions can be the fastest way of freeing up the space for other instruments. I've got three sequences, impacts, bass, and clocks. For impacts, I want to extract only the downbeats, so I will tell the engine to skip all the steps below the highest velocities with a 100% chance. For the sub, I will do the opposite and tell the engine to skip every high-velocity note. 
And for clocks, I will do the same thing as I did for the sub. By clicking the gear icon next to the velocity curve, you will find the menu to tweak the velocity response of the sequencer with four different curves. Linear, S-shaped, brick wall, and scale curves. Tweak the desired curve and hit apply to change the velocity response. While we know that steps controls the number of steps in the sequence, frequency determines the time division for each whole step and goes from half a bar up to a 64th triplet. Furthermore, it can be switched to the Hertz mode, which goes all the way into the audio rate territory. We will discuss that in a few minutes. Tempo defines the overall speed of the sequence and can go down a quarter of the default or up to four times the default tempo. Humanizer adds random timing errors and goes from subtle to intense 60 milliseconds. The host grid locks the engine to the MIDI clips in your DAW, so the sequence will restart the cycle each time it sees a new MIDI event. Reset All simply returns all parameters of the sequencer to its default state. The watchkeeper is able to calculate all settings, including dynamics, skip and go steps, velocity curve, and even humanize to create a MIDI file, which you can use inside the DAW. Click on the Get MIDI button, then drag and drop the file on your timeline. There's one button we've missed, and it's the play once button. It stops the sequencer at the end of the cycle, and sound designers will love it. We can switch the frequency to the hertz mode, speed up the frequency, use the random button on the pan and pitch, and load any rhythm. Layer it with a kick, for example, and create one-of-a-kind one-shots. Let's open the rhythm browser now. Here, you will find the main window with the ability to sort presets by number, category, or favorites. The Categories menu allows you to easily navigate our library of rhythms. Pick a desired category, and the browser will show you only dedicated ones. The Load Rhythm Only option will load only the velocity sequence, leaving other lanes untouched. It's very handy when you've dialed in some dynamics and want to try it with other rhythms. But the main stars here are the Pick Random and Construct Random buttons. For ease of use, we've created shortcuts on the rhythm page for quick access. Pick random will choose any rhythm randomly depending on the category you're at. If a category isn't specified, the watchkeeper will choose from the whole library of rhythm presets. Construct random will create a new rhythm depending on the category you're at with a special algorithm to blend different rhythms together for the best results. The effects page allows you to add up to seven stomp effects to the rack. To do that, simply click on the rack slot and choose from a huge library of 32 stomps. You can also use a magnifying glass to open the stomp browser. In the lower part of the interface, you'll find all the controls for stomp pedals and additional drop-down menus to tweak their behavior. Slot Presets contains individual stomp presets. You can switch a stomp on or off by using the power button above each slot. To clear the slot, press the Clear Slot button. FX Chain's browser contains the main window with the ability to sort presets by number, category, or favorites. Categories menu for efficient navigation in the library of 246 presets, standard save, load, and cancel load buttons, as well as the pick random function which picks any effects chain depending on the category you're at. You can rearrange the stomps by dragging them to a new place. Bypass All bypasses the whole chain, and Reset All deletes all stomps from the rack. We can automate FXs by going to Host Automation of the Contact, assigning parameters to a few stomp controls, draw automation changes for them, and observe our effects moving. If you need help with any function of the Watchkeeper, you can always refer to the interactive manual that will show you all the info about the engine and its controls or open the list of hotkeys with info for every page of the Watchkeeper. And that wraps it up. Thank you for watching.